Canada has the largest surface area of water on the planet. More than any other country. 891,163 square kilometers. Nearly one-tenth of this immense land mass covered by fresh water. In my opinion, that fact means that we are the world's richest country. Fresh water is the number one natural resource. There's over 80 countries that have none. Can you imagine that? Not having access to any lakes or rivers? In Ontario, the choices for areas in which to canoe and camp in are vast and varied, including parks, conservation reserves, and public land. What a shame it would be to not revel in this beautiful, wild excess that we're privy to. first day would be a long travel day across Big Flack Lake, then a mess of hilly, rugged portages and the beautiful lakes in between them, eventually landing in Astonish Lake. Campers, here we go. Are we camping yet? Are we camping yet? Six days in the bush. You got, you have a set of maps for me? I do. All right. Well, we thought it was going to be a damp departure, but <clears throat> so far so good. The wind immediately picked up as we got into the lake. So much so that we decided to follow the shoreline. It was an unpredictable side wind, swirling and kind of unsettling at times. We pulled into a little bay to wait it out. settled a little bit and we pushed on. We had three portages. 2,500, 3,000 meters all together. Good start, good start. Ridiculously heavy pack, check. Oh, I feel like I'm climbing up Old Baldy. Everything is super damp. Every log, every rock. Slippery. I'm a good whiner. First portage out of the way. That was the easy one. <laughs> Forecast was to be raining all day, so. So far, so good. Because if I said that, so far, so good. Second 
run on the second portage. These portages are humdingers. They're very uh, tomogamy esque. Scott, unfortunately, has broken his yoke. I don't know what we're gonna do there. I've got some duct tape, not a lot, but I have some. So we'll see if that can jury rig something. Really hard to follow the trail sometimes. It just doesn't get used that much. See, at this point, I don't know if I'm on the trail or not. What the? Wow, I got way off trail. I managed to find it again. So deceiving. So many little animal trails. Second portage done. Rain looks like it's barreling down our way. That was 850. Okay, we're at the head of the 1100. We're gonna stop, see if we can get a little fix going for Scotty's yoke. Eat some food, get a drink. Portage is complete. Uh, Scott's yoke is pretty well skewered. So we're gonna try and effect some sort of fix on that tonight. Duct tape and, I don't know, figure something out. Sorry, I haven't been filming much, but these portages have just been hell. And we wanted to get ahead of this rain if we are gonna get any. Loving the fact that we haven't really had any yet, but. The rains came fast and furious, just as we arrived at camp. Thankfully, it didn't last very long. Come on, little pot. A prime means it's just got one focal length. Yeah, yeah, it's just a 16. For like portraits and stuff? No, no, portraits you use like 50 or 80. Oh yeah? Yeah, you don't want any warpage, you know? Right, oh, okay. 16 is like kind of a... Wide. Sort of wide, yeah. Super okay. wide, yeah. Comfortably tucked away in the hammo. I'm gonna sleep like a doll tonight. There's a moose crashing around out there in the woods, wailing and thumping. Like I say, we really lucked out today. The rain basically didn't uh, really hit us until we were just arriving at camp, which was around, I don't know, five o'clock, 5.30. We were in a mad scurry because it was really starting to come down. But then it let up long enough that we could make some dinner. And then it came back and we hung out under Scott's tarp. Sorry, under Scott's hammock tarp, fly, whatever you want to call it and uh, had dinner and a beer. Quite nice. But for now, it is good night, and we will see you tomorrow. Later. The winds were back. We were met with gray skies and spats of rain in the morning.
That looks like a new one. Ooh. Scott's got some epoxy, so we're gonna see if we can sort of rebuild the ends, or the end in particular, of this rotted out yoke. Enough that it'll hold till he can get it home and either get a new yoke or repair it properly. Or maybe this fix will last forever. <laughs> what am I watching exactly? This has a rolled edge. Mm -hmm. And these are to take up yeah. that gap because otherwise this crushes the rolled edge. Well, why don't I take some of the duct tape? Yeah, you know, make a little a gasket. Yeah. I'm gonna use some paper as a little form around here that I can like literally pour the epoxy into and just let it all settle. These guys just tape in like that. Repairs are going well. We are about 12.30. We're gonna move on from this campsite, head over into uh, Esma, and possibly Upper Mace, depending on how we feel. There is a moose, or mooses, just bugling and trumpeting, and I don't know if there's some mating going on back there or what's going on, but I keep expecting one to come charging through the site here. Hopefully not. Back in business, we hope. It's a little bit late in the afternoon, probably 2.30, 3 o'clock. We've got to have a late start because of our boat fix program. Hopefully that is successful. And we'll see what kind of nice little site we get on Esma Lake. Way too many layers on now to be doing anything I physical. Just, I just took one like that. The wind was messing with us for a good portion of the day. Sometimes blasting us through narrow passageways and at other times, straighten our face.
Ridiculously heavy pack, check. Eventually, we reached a nice spot to settle for the night. And as we set up camp, the wind kicked into overdrive. Campers. Cold night, beautiful night. Man, I love, 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 love camping in the fall. It's so awesome. It's about, I don't know, it's hovering around zero. It's probably one or two degrees. Really windy. But hopefully the weather will take a turn for the... Jeez, hear that wind? <laughs> it's crazy, man. It's about midnight now. No stars at all so far on this trip. Hopefully that'll change over the next couple days. I would love to stay up and do some uh, astrophotography. But for now, it's bedtime, sleep time, recharge, and uh, we will see you in the morning. Well, she's... Uh this is day three of the camping trip. Very cold, very windy this morning, holy moly. But we got a little bit of sun, so we're gonna hang out on our little beachfront. Yeah, maybe we're gonna do a day trip. Maybe we're just gonna hang around the campsite, do some little piddle paddles in this lake, I'm not sure. I have no agenda. Had me a little bath this morning because I needed it. <laughs> have I cracked my screen? It would appear that I have cracked the back screen on this GoPro. Boo.
we made a couple of half-hearted attempts to get out into the boats. But the wind would kick up and sway us otherwise. We were happy to just putter about camp, cleaning things up, adjusting the fire pit, making some changes to our hammock setups. Well, I had a reasonably comfy, I, I had an incredibly comfy sleep the first night, and uh, last night I just felt like it was extra cold, but I also had my tarp rigged much higher last night and much more open than I did the first night. So now, as you can see, I've battened down the angles a little bit. goes. seems to, eh? It seems like it's really throwing off heat. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, it's like a little oven under here. Sometimes people ask, and I often ask myself why we put all this effort into doing backcountry trips. Time. Space. Focus. Serenity. I don't feel more alive anywhere else like I do when I'm out here.
We're the Kula Bros. Beautiful day for a walk through the woods. Even with a big load, it's very nice. Probably only about four degrees out, but that is just about perfect. difference a couple days makes. September, warm days, cool nights, no bugs. I don't know what I did with my map for like the first time this trip. Well, we've arrived at campsite number three for this trip. It's a freaking beauty. Faces west, we can actually see pretty well. 250 degrees. A little bit of a gear bomb here as we dry things out here on the Tumble Home YouTube channel. You walk up to the mezzanine level. Beautiful fire pit. Look at that. 
And if you go a little further up the hill, hammock zone A. Scott's kind of drying stuff out here a little bit. And then I've gone just a little further up the hill. I too am airing everything out. We packed up pretty early this morning. So if you keep going up, up to the Lido deck, look at this. I believe they call this Time Lapse Alley. Amazing. Big ass pine. Okay, I'm gonna go for a swim. Scott said it's pretty chilly. What a spot. What say thee, bearded master? What say thee, bearded master? <laughs> Good day paddling. Blazed through the portage. Uh, had a little swim. And uh, yeah, we relaxed and ate some snacks and now we're gonna collect some wood and think about dinner and hopefully everything clears up and we get some spectacular stars again tonight. Maybe a little midnight paddle, a little skedaddle with the paddle out there in the dark. <laughs> Another <laughs> skedaddle with the paddle. did get out into the boats. We just felt like we didn't need to. It was so nice sitting by the fire. The stars just kept getting brighter and brighter as the last bits of daylight faded. to lay there for three or four hours.
just an amazing morning to wake up to. When the mist finally lifted, the forest slowly came to life. The sun peeling back the shroud. The three sisters. We packed up pretty early and got away in good time. Not far from the campsite, I saw a couple of painted turtles taking in some rays, basking on a log. I pulled out the GoPro and let the breeze push me towards them. Unfortunately, it pushed me right at them. I didn't want to disturb them, but at this point it was too late. Thankfully, it didn't piss them off too much. I'm sure they were right back up on that log after we left. Geographic. Wrong camera though. The Dolly Berry 290. The Dolly Berry 290. He's a killer. The GoPro does it no justice, of course. The Dolly Berry 290. It's a grueling, arduous ordeal made for only the most experienced campers. Luckily, I've been carb loading for months, so the energy will be no problem whatsoever. <laughs>
So we're near the top of Dolly Berry. I'm gonna scoop down bubble wash. A couple of small ports going into Sam Reed. Should be there. Three o'clock-ish, 3.30. We meandered our way to Sam Reed Lake. Found a nice site. Set up camp and then decided to have a quick nap that turned into a not so quick nap. The sun had already gone down by the time we got up. nap like that under our belts. We stayed up pretty late. Had a couple cocktails and drank in as much of the beautiful night sky as we could. It was awesome. Another great day. I apologize now for not recording much. <laughs> Basically when we arrived at this site on Sam Reed, we were both bushed. So we set up our hammocks, had a quick bite to eat, and then decided to have a nap that we thought would last, you know, maybe 20 minutes, half an hour, but we were asleep for probably two hours at out cold, both of us. We got up and the sun had already gone down. And we sat around the fire tonight and uh, talked about all sorts of cool stuff. Um, I did a couple of time lapses and that was about it. I didn't do much photography other than that. So this is uh, our fifth night and we're heading out tomorrow. <clears throat> Little collection of rugged portages, including one long one to uh, tackle on our way out of here. And then a uh, cruise down Flack Lake, back to the car, and then back home. We will see you in the morning. With a bit of a headwind and a rugged day of travel ahead of us, we got away in good time.
Nicely done. field of little maple trees. Well, this is it. Thanks for uh, watching our little video here. This is the end of the line. We made it across Flack, despite the headwind. Not too bad. And uh, yeah, another trip in the books. Heading out again in a month. Late October, maybe even into November. We'll see how that goes.